I restart. Hello, I'm Andrea Vagliardi and I'm the chair of this session. It's a pleasure for me to introduce uh, Dr. Aaron Ren. Dr. Ren is an ARC Decra Fellow at the School of Physics and Astronomy at the Monash University. He joined the Monash from June 2022, before that he held the Macquarie University, University Research Fellowship at Macquarie University, a Humboldt Research Fellowship at LMU University, and a postdoc at RMIT University. He got a PhD in 2017 from Sweetborn University of Technology. His nanophotonic research seeks to uncover the underlying physics in multidimensional light matter interactions. His broad research interest spans from structural light imaging, meta optics, resonant meta nanophotonics, to quantum photonics, fiber optics, and integrated photonics. Dr. Ren is a member of APL Photonics Editorial Editor, Editor the Repository Board and an associate investigator for the ARC Center of Excellence for Transformative Metoptical System. He was awarded the 2022 Anzos Geo Opa Early Career Research Prize, the 2017 Victoria Fellowship, and the 2016 Outstanding Chinese Students Award. Dr. Ren, the stage is yours. Thanks very much, Andrea. Uh, thanks, thanks a lot for the welcome introduction. Can I um just uh, share the screen? Currently, it's uh, disabled somehow. Okay, now now it seems working. Great. Thanks a lot again for the introduction, um, and also particular thanks to Gianluca and other organizers for having me here. Uh, my name is, um, let me just put this full screen. My name, ah, okay. Okay, probably this is better. My name is um, uh, Haoren Ren. Um, I'm working as the ARC Decra Fellow at the School of Physics and Astronomy, uh, Monash University in Australia. So the, the presentation today, I'm going to talk about structured light matter surfaces. There's two, um, there are two basically phrases in my title, structural light and matter surfaces. Given the nature of this uh, uh, lecture presentation, I would like to first briefly introduce the concept of uh, structural light, at least from my uh, perspective. So we can basically um, engineer all the manipulate optical wavefront in multi Multiple degrees of free, uh, multiple degrees of freedom. Uh, that mainly includes, uh, in general, you know, the time and the space domains. And in the special in the special domain, there's um, uh, many degrees of freedom. For instance, you can consider the amplitude, the phase, polarization, uh, manipulation. And uh, uh, today we are particularly interested in the orbital angular momentum modes, which is carried by the a uh, specially designed phase structure of the optical uh, of the optical beam, which we call the helical wavefront. Um, so why do we need a structured light? Because if you think about the light, most of your layers, you see the optical beam, they are plane wave and especially homogeneous. But the structured light beam currently, uh, we already have the technology to structure the light beam with especially inhomogeneous, either the phase structure or the polarization structure. For instance, as showing in, in the image here, we can prepare the beam to be vector beams or just the twisting the wavefront to create a twisted light that carries orbital angular momentum modes. And the huge advantage or the gift of the light, basically you can think of is the uh, huge number of these special modes. And uh, in principle, mathematically, they are orthogonal to each other, which can potentially, you know, you can be used to encode and decode the optical information. So that's the huge, uh, huge advantage as compared to the uh, binary system like electrons. Um, but the current problem or the challenges I would see for this field is basically the generation or the detection process in particular for the detection still very much rely on the bulky and heavy optical uh, table systems. Uh, 
So that gave us the motivation, at least my motivation to um, work out the structure like the generation detection by using, you know, our nanophotonic approach, which apparently give us the smaller footprint and the form factor. So um, I gave a one slide introduction to the uh, angular moment of light, which, you know, you can uh, separate them in a proxy limit into the spin uh, component and orbital component in free space. Um, so the spin uh, angular moment is carried by the circular polarization with different handedness. This is carried by the polarization degree of freedom. And orbital angular moment mode is a kind of a twisted light. As you can see, there's a, a red um, wavefront. Basically, this one can, um, the topological charge, which is the orbital angular moment order, can go to the infinite in principle, even though it's practically limited by the aperture size of your optics. Um, but all, but the, 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 the modes, they are uh, orthogonal to each other, which, uh, as I mentioned before, that gives the advantage to use this uh, structure led modes to encode the information due to this kind of orthogonality. Um, and uh, in the next bit, I just uh, quickly introduce uh, meta surfaces, which it seems like a redundant because uh, Gianluca already uh, showed the beautiful slides for this um, uh, meta surface concept. Uh, here, just to recap a little bit, uh, the rise of the meta surfaces, uh, ma many people argue, you know, already the very uh, much concept similar to the diffract optics, but uh, the the true rise of this field from my perspective is about a decade ago, uh, due to this uh, famous paper published in Science by the Harvard group. So basically, they 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 demonstrated that you know by putting this uh, interfacial layer, interfacial uh, surface structure on on your uh, interface of the different refracting uh, media material, basically you can uh, add uh, extra linear momentum to the beam, for instance, like this uh, grating, so that you can shift the beam that is a uh, uh, way more uh, general than the conventional uh, laws of uh, refraction and reflection. And the metal surface has the advantage because of their ultra thin thickness as compared to the original concept of the metal materials, which is very much, uh, you still rely on the beam propagating inside this media, even though the media has the uh, artificially, de artificially designed in index, which is not naturally occurring. Um, but interfacial structures, obviously, uh, just the less propagation and the less loss. And also it's, uh, it's easier for the fabrication and the integration with uh, uh, many other photonic devices. So a couple of slides to show the uh, physically how how do we consider or the calculate the uh, the modes or the phase amplitude response from the nanostructures in the subwavelength scale. So if you consider here a single nano rod, if you calculate, you know, this could be regarded as the electric dipole. If you go to the uh, if you go to the theory, calculate the dipolar response, and you can never basically reach the four phase manipulation that we always need to cover the zero to two pi phase modulation range, which is um, uh, it's a challenging to use the single nano rods to realize this. Uh, that's why it gives this gives rise to this famous paper published uh, uh, more than a decade ago now. Uh, they basically used uh, similar like a uh, two nano rods, but uh, hybridized into like a kind of a V-shaped structure. And uh, due to this uh, plasmonic mode hybridization, basically the structures can cover the phase modulation uh, across zero to two pi. So it's uh, it's extending basically extending the original single rod based uh, zero to pi maximal phase coverage. And with this kind of um, uh, you know. Um, precise selection of this um, um, nano, rod, nano rods antennas. So basically we can uh, reach zero to zero to two pi phase modulation. That's basically uh, paving the way for the wavefront ma manipulation, basically. Um, there's many contributions by many groups in terms of the metal surfaces used for both far field and near field electromagnetic wave manipulation. In particular, focus here is optical waves. And uh, a couple of um, uh, directions that the people look at this field is um, uh, either based on the resonance, you build up this um, 
uh, resonance-based uh, gradient matter surfaces uh, for the wavefront shaping purpose of its high quality uh, matter surfaces. Now people prefer to call the non-local matter surface uh, because they very much rely on not on the individual effect, but on the uh, whole array effect, uh, harnessing the high quality factor resonances. Um, that's for the sensing applications, for instance, or the uh, energy harvesting. Um, and also the broadband geometry hybridized metal surfaces uh, for the way from the shaping. Um, apart from that, there's many metal surfaces can also be developed for the uh, control or in the near field of the electromagnetic waves, for instance, by coupling the light into the surface waves, and then you put some structures, nanostructures to manipulate their propagation on, on the chip, basically. Uh, in terms of the applications, very similar to Jean Lucas uh, slides, you know, you can use the metal surface for many different applications. This is the, just the, some examples that in the information optics field, which you can use the metal surface, uh, um, uh, you know, as the lens to to achieve the focusing and the imaging function, uh, or the nonlinear processing, you know, the surface cloaking. Yeah, putting the metal surface into the laser cavity can create the uh, different uh, structure light modes and the metal surface can further be integrated onto the optical fibers to achieve the advanced uh, uh, endoscopes. Um, and also, you know, you can use the metal surface to decode, to digitize the holograms and create this atrocine holograms and also can be used for the image differentiation to process the images. And also recently, you know, this this kind of system can be used for manipulation of the quantum um, emission. So, um, so that's why you know that my uh, research interest basically is sitting at the interface between the structural lights. Uh, because I, as I mentioned, you know, this is the like kind of a gift of the uh, optics that offer us this uh, extra uh, degree of freedom for the multi-dimensional light matter interactions. Uh, as well as this uh, nanophotonics and uh, in particular the metal surfaces. So, so combining these two, you can make many different kinds of uh, structural light metal surfaces. Um, and uh, our um, uh, strong motivation for, for our uh, own research is to use the laser as the way to fabricate the, the metal surfaces. So in the next bit, I would like to quickly introduce what is the 3D uh, laser nanoprinting, or you, you can see this 3D direct laser writing. So the journey basically starts from um, 1997, I would say by uh, Professor Shatosh Kawata's group. They fabricate something like this kind of a micro boost structures and demonstrate a concept called the two photon polymerization. This is very much like a beginning journey of this field by using the laser to define the structures in the 3D uh, form. And the nice thing here, as compared to the planet lithography, you end up with the structures with a single height. Here, obviously, you can create a much more complex 3D structures. And how it works, basically, you focus the, the beam down to a small focal spot. And due to the light matter interactions, in particular with the photoresist, for instance, and some nonlinear process, you can make the point spread function of the focal spot smaller. Uh, that's the nonlinear process. But together with the polymerization threshold by tuning the material, you know, just to above the polymerization threshold, you end up with the structures can be very small. Uh, than the, as compared to the wavelengths nowadays for our for us to you know just to use the commercial nanoscrap system we can push the feature size uh, below 100 nanometer with the resolution um, around 350 nanometer in the transverse direction. So there's um, also many um, um, you know research development. Uh, for for this uh, 3D direct, direct laser writing, people trying to push the better resolution, better speed. Nowadays, you know the Quantum X, which is the newest uh, uh, system for the uh, for this um, uh, commercialized uh, 3D laser printing. Uh, so they can go to the 6.25 meters per second. It's very fast for printing, and also the uh, application wise, you know, you can put this uh, surfaces. 
uh, you can put this kind of um, uh, 3D printed structures on top of the fibers uh, for endoscope imaging or the, for the other applications. And also the materials is another aspect that the people are trying to push using the laser to process not only the polymers for the polymerization uh, process, but also you know interacting with the nonlinear materials, for instance, all the metal materials just to functionalize this uh, uh, these systems, uh, and of, of obviously putting this uh, uh, 3D printed macro optics on top of the fiber is uh, is uh, is very much appealing to functionalize the fiber. So this is the very much like uh, the multi uh, the this um, uh, this is the um, the key aspect of my talk today. I would like to. Uh, introduce our recent work in this field by using the 3D laser printing to uh, work out different uh, metal surfaces, uh, which we used for the wavefront shaping as well as for the light harvesting. But uh, in particular, I would like to emphasize a little bit more on the, because my title is Structural Light Metal Surfaces, I would like to show you a bit more how do we use this um, complex amplitude metal surface for holography. Uh, as well as very recently, we put this uh, metal surface on top of the uh, fiber to uh, basically uh, synthesize uh, arbitrary structure the light as the output. So that's a that's a started from the the first concept of the complex amplitude metal surface for twisted light holography. The motivation of this um, research is as follows: basically, uh, we wanted to ex expand the bandwidth of the single meta surface hologram. As I mentioned, the meta surface hologram is already appealing enough because of the thickness nowadays can be uh, subwavelength. It's very small, which is uh, uh, cool. Um, and the next scenes is trying to extend the capacity uh, for the single hologram. You know, the, the conventional way that the people already look at the polarization, wavelengths, uh, instant angle or even nonlinear reality for this uh, process in, to encode more uh, information. So our motivation uh, back to a couple of years ago uh, was how about the structure light modes? Because you know this kind of things have been applied for uh, optical communications, for instance, why has not been implemented by uh, sorry by this holographic community? That was basically the the question we we ask ourselves. Uh, by by uh, doing some detailed analysis of the hologram, we realized the problem is um, it's this. Basically, if you do the Fourier transform of the hologram, like a conventional design hologram, right, based on the like kind of iterative uh, algorithm, you get this ample uh, intensity response of arbitrary, you know, the dissolved image. Uh, but doing this for your analysis, go to the momentous space of the hologram, which is uh, back to the image plane, you will see the letter A is almost every single pixel is connected. So if you do the linear momentum analysis, you will see that, you know, this is very much like this kind of a scenario. All the spectral frequency components, they are connected, all very much closely packed. So if you have a structure that modes as incident, which will be convoluted into each linear momentum, and uh, if the image itself is connected in the momentum space, that means all the special frequency components will get scrambled. Uh, you know, if you have the incidence light of the OEM, so you you won't be able to end up with the uh, OM. You know, the 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 pixels won't be end up with the OM feature anymore. So the trick that we played back to a couple of years ago was very simple, just by specially um, sampling this uh, uh, image in the Fourier plane, which back to the uh, hologram plane, you, you can have this specially described uh, special frequency components. And as of this uh, instant of the OEM mode, so they, the mode can be basically preserved very well. And then you end up with the uh, the OM pixels, you know, go to the each pixel, the, the OM modes still can be very well reconstructed without breaking down. So this is important to further, you know, to use, to build up this OM uh, selectivity or the multiplexing hologram. So the trick we played is here, very simple, by digitalize or sampling your image target in the photo plan of the hologram. Um, so that gives rise to 
uh, this publication where we just use the gallium phosphide uh, nanostructures uh, at that time to um, build up this um, metal surface. As I, as I mentioned, you know, the key thing here is the encoding process that instead of like a conventional hologram, you, you calculate based on a specially continuous image response, but we just use in the pixelated uh, image response as our target to do this hologram calculation. Um, and uh, then each of this, because of the separation uh, of these pixels in the Fourier space, basically this um, um, OM modes can be preserved. And uh, later on, you can use uh, different uh, uh, angular momentum modes to uh, selective the uh, reconstruct the image from the multiplexing hologram. By doing so, we, we got a, another challenging here is if you can only do the face only control, basically it's kind of a breakdown of the linear superposition law for optical multiplexing. So some mathematical uh, derivation is uh, just uh, showing on the slide of which I don't want to uh, go that much detail, but just uh, seeing that if we have the way to control both amplitude and the phase, so the life can uh, become much easier. So that's give us this motivation to demonstrate the complex amplitude metal surface hologram for this OM holography in particular. And uh, uh, in this um, uh, in this particular work, we showed at least uh, theoretically, you know, you can encode 100 images by a uh, single hologram. And you can encode 200 images each at a different um, um, a Fourier planes of your hologram. So basically they can be reconstructed even like this kind of a three-dimensional holographic image, even though it's a two layers, but in principle, you know, you can go to many other um uh, uh many other uh planes in the in the Fourier space. So um the image image density can be significantly increased if we have the way to control both amplitude and the phase. And the, the specific coding uh, technology behind this is, uh, is, uh, is doing some kind of um, uh, uh, sampling of the hologram. This is very much like a face-only hologram approach. We did the same. But if we only do the uh, 2D sampling, uh, you know, the sampling of the image and uh, get the Fourier transform directly to the complex amplitude, here, I, I would like to um, emphasize here is because of the complex amplitude control, so we don't need this uh, iterative algorithm to calculate the phase only response. So basically, um, you end up with um, uh, both amplitude and the phase response by using the single for, for a transform process. But you end up with the amplitude is very much like a big amplitude variation uh, from a uh, very a low frequency component, which which is highest intensity, and to the high spectral components that the lower intensity, difficult to digitalize by all implementation by using the metal surface. So what we did one more step, the trick is just adding the random face to uh, the target image in addition to the sampling array, so that we end up with the complex amplitude hologram that can be easily. Uh, digitized using the uh, metal surface technology. So the, the metal surface itself that we use is based on the 3D polymer structures. Um, um, and then we use this implant rotation to control the geometric phase response, uh, give us the phase response covering from the zero to two pi, depending on the rotation angle, because the pillar itself can be regarded as the birefringent uh, weight plate. And the height itself can be used to, to uh, reconstruct the amplitude response. So altogether, we cover both amplitude and phase with the 64 uh, levels. And this is the results where we printed the metal surface hologram with diameter of 2.5 millimeter. Um, and then we reconstruct, uh, I, I think it's um, uh, 30, uh, probably it's a 36 images, sorry, it's uh, just a couple of um, years, uh, but from the two different uh, plans. And the, the system is very simple. You put the metal surface hologram sample here. What we need is just a shining different uh, OM uh, structural light onto the hologram. And then we put the CCD camera to capture the image response. All right, so um, in the next... Uh, uh, in the next couple of minutes, I will quickly go through some other 
uh, applications of these uh, 3D laser printed metal surfaces. With the emphasis of uh, recent work, we create this uh, arbitrary structure light modes on, uh, on the uh, single mode optical fiber. So this is the results. Uh, where we put this metal surface on top of the polarization maintaining fiber, which is important. Two, two things are important. First, they have to be single mode. If it's multi-mode, then the face information is get uh, scrambled. So it's, a, it's a very hard to control the face. So it has to be, the fiber itself has to be single mode. And for the generation of uh, arbitrary structure light, we talk about the light that carries a specially inhomogeneous uh, polarization response like this, showing in the bottom side of the image here. So we have to have the um, uh, output of the polarization to be determined so that we can further engineer the polariz polarization state. And the structure that we use, again, is a very simple nanopeter structures in the three dimension uh, degrees of freedom, you know, and by doing some mathematical calculation, if you have an incident light as the linear polarization, you already get the results like this that are giving you the indication that, you know, both phase and the polarization here can be independently controlled. And doing some further mathematics actually uh, the answer is yes. So through some uh, engineering of the uh, the rotation, the height, the transverse size, you know, um, that you you control basically a couple of um, a design degrees of freedom here, you end up with arbitrary, uh, you know, the sorry, the independent phase and the polarization control down to a single nanopeter pixel level, and uh, this is the uh, generated the three D metal atom. Uh, library, which I would like to highlight that, you know, again, so because if you can go to the, if you can put this a third dimension into consideration, that basically give you more enriched metal item library as compared to the 2D layered structure, which is only one layer of this uh, uh, structure, for instance, so that we can have more possibilities to find correct all the precisely uh, correct uh, uh, pillars to, to implement our uh, uh, polarization and the phase control. Um, and then we demonstrate a couple of examples. For instance, we can create this uh, uh, radio and the, polar uh, and the radio polarization and the uh, uh, azimuth polarization from the optical fiber. And this has been verified by rotating the uh, polarizer as the analyzer. Uh, in the output of the fiber so that it follows the two lobes pattern is follows the polarization um, polarization angle that is suggesting the creating of this cylindrical vector beams. Um, on top of that, we also demonstrate that the circular polar polarized light can also carry the different orbital angular momentum modes. And this is the, the point that in the hybrid order Poincare sphere, which is in the uh, which is in the north and in the south poles that consists of the circular polarizations with, uh, uh, you know, with the different OAM modes and uh, as well as the different phase. So basically, uh, that's another example that we uh, demonstrate that we can access to the north and the south pole of hybrid order Poincare sphere. And the, the, the third example that we gave for this uh, demonstration is to show even more general case, which is arbitrary point that we selected from the hybrid order Poincare sphere by creating the structure light, having this especially inhomogeneous uh, elliptical polarization, but they can also carry the uh, orbital angular momentum modes. I have to uh, mention here the tower structure that is used to expand the light freely from the uh, single mode optical fiber. The output is always very small because of the core, right? Because of the single mode, the core is small. In order to manipulate efficiently their wavefront, so we expand the beam into the skew around 100 micrometer so that we put the metal surface with this size to uh, manipulate the wavefront. Um, uh, just to quickly scan through, due to the time limit, I would like to quickly scan through a couple of the other examples that recently we put some efforts. Here is a high numerical aperture lens on top of the single mode fiber, which we can use for uh, you know, high numerical aperture imaging, as well as for optical trapping. This is mainly driven by my collaborator, 
uh, Marcus Schmidt's group in Vienna. And also we, 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 we showed the possibility, you know, not only for the wavefront manipulation, but this kind of a 3D printing can also be useful to create this um, kind of a non-local metal surface harnessing this high quality factor resonance so that you put the molecules on top, you can basically uh, do some sensing experiment. And also recently we put this achromatic uh, metal surface on top of the single mode fiber. We can achieve this achromatic focusing and imaging across the whole uh, telecommunication wavelength range. Um, here is the, the height dimension is also very useful and beneficial because we can expand the, uh, you know, this um, dispersion control capability, basically. All right, so uh, I would like to give a summary and a take home message for the presentation today. I showed a bit the twisted light holography, which you shine in the structure light modes onto the single hologram and reconstruct different images out. And uh, given this uh, complex amplitude control, basically they can uh, largely increase the bandwidth of um, a hologram. You know, you don't have to do any special multiplexing, whatever this uh, structure based a multiplexing, but all this is through this um, uh, calculation of the hologram itself. So it's it's uh, it's 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 it's, uh, it's much more uh, robust. And also, can this uh, you know multiplexing approach can be compatible with other multiplexing schemes? For instance, the polarization and the wavelengths. You can work out the the hologram that have this multiplexing capability altogether. And also, I showed arbitrary structure light beam on the hybrid order Poincaré sphere can be now be transformed on top of the fiber. And then you can think of if I need this structure light, I don't have to prepare using a special light modulator in a very much complex way, uh, like uh, interferometer or whatever, to prepare such beam. I just uh, deliver the beam through the fiber if this is required, like a microscope. Uh, so the advantages of the 3D metal optics are apparently it has unlimited, no, sorry, not unlimited, unleashed the high degree of freedom in the 3D metal atoms. This is unique as compared to the planar lithography and also offers more advanced amplitude phase polarization dispersion control, even though the refract index is limited. Um, and also it's a flexible that you can do the 3D stacking, multi-layer structures, or you know, even printing these hybridized uh, structures by you know, uh, considering both diffractive and op uh, refractive optical elements. With that, I would like to acknowledge my uh, colleagues and collaborators from, um, uh, from different groups. And um, yeah, so thanks a lot for their uh, contributions to the work that I'm just uh, presented. And also thanks a lot for all your uh, attention. Thanks.